I do want to thank everybody for uh, coming and, and the, the strong interest that you're showing in this event and in life extension in general. This is for some of us here, this is our lives, this is our passion. And when you finish hearing about everything that's been going on in the last nine or ten years since we started the uh, Manhattan Beach Project, I think you're going to be equally impressed. And if you're not sharing that passion yet, uh, you will be. This is, uh, can you all read this? This is a favorite cartoon that I cut out. Oh, it's a Lou Anne cartoon. Greg Evans uh, gave us permission to use it. And it really illustrates what this is all about. Um, first, first frame, uh, two movie stars back in the, it looks like, third, maybe back in the 40s, a uh, couple watching them, and then uh, the husband saying, my God, uh, it makes me so sad to see them that way, knowing how they both ended up, sick and alone, suffering long illness and decline, with before and after pictures in the bottom left-hand frame. And then it goes on and on and on. Well, this is, this is the problem that is facing all of us as we wind down in life. And we're winding down when we should actually start gearing up. This is a time when we, we're smarter than we ever had been in our lives. We have more wisdom, hopefully, because, simply because of age. We have more to contribute to society, more to teach the younger generations to solve the problems in this world. And look what happens. And then, of course, the, the, after the, the pictures on the right in that lower left frame, they just disappear. They're gone forever. We're, we're going to stop this. But better, we're going to reverse it. You take the two movie stars and switch positions, and that's what we're going to be doing. And that's what we've accomplished on paper with a scientific roadmap to reverse the human aging process. Now. How did this whole thing come about? I mean, this got an interesting start about on my 55th birthday, uh, I was challenged, at least internally, with trying to figure out how I'm going to accomplish the goals I had set in my life with the time I had left to set the goal, to, to accomplish the goals. And I did a, a little exercise, and the exercise looks something like this. I drew a rectangle with a bunch of intersecting lines. I had, uh, you'll see, 24 columns and 40 rows. If you take 24 times 40, you get 960. Each square represents one month in my life, according to how long actuary says somebody my age would live, and that would be about 80. So we have 960 squares here. My next step was to fill in or color in the squares that I had already used up. Now, this was supposed to motivate me. <laughs> but when I got through with this, <clears throat> I saw a huge problem. I had used up almost all my squares. <laughs> and the ones I had left facing me were the ones that were typically in decline. I call them the crappy squares. And what's even more um, frightful is that I've used up about 138 or 39 or 37 squares since then. I, I, I refuse to color those in because it's too depressing. But this became not, this became, you know, not motivating, really. Uh, it did create a sense of urgency, which is one of the things I needed to do. But it created a problem, and I needed a, I needed a solution for that problem. And the solution was to just add more squares. How simple could it be? Now, that was, um, that was about 11 years ago. And since then, uh, the next year I formed Maximum Life Foundation. Uh, the year after that, we moved to California uh, to be closer, I was in Pennsylvania, to be closer to the biotech industry and all the things that were happening uh, for all the things I needed to do to give us these extra squares. The, um, on June 23rd and June 24th of 2000, we held our first scientific brainstorm session right here in the same hotel uh, with 12 of the, top, of the leading scientists around the world in different aspects, different disciplines in aging research, life extension research. Many of them had not met one another prior to that. Most of them had not brainstormed 
or cross-pollinated ideas with people in different disciplines. This was their first opportunity for some of those people to, to do that. And out of that brainstorm session, we had the basis for a scientific roadmap to reverse the human aging process. Many of you might have heard of SENS, uh, Aubrey de Grey. Aubrey was here. Was Aubrey still here? He was here a minute ago. There was behind. Aubrey, uh, Aubrey found, uh, gave birth to SENS at that project, and we'll talk about SENS in a, in a few minutes. The Manhattan Project, which was formed and, uh, to end World War II by developing the atomic bomb, has been, been, become a catchphrase for uh, concerted efforts pulling all the stops to accomplish a major goal. And we were here in Manhattan Beach. I propose that we have a Manhattan Project type uh, undertaking. Uh, George Roth, one of the uh, researchers who's not here today, said, hey, well, is the, how about the Manhattan Beach Project? So it's a much softer project. This is the project we're going to be saving probably, in fact, definitely more lives than ending World War II saved, but we're going to do it without taking lives. Big difference. So what about aging? What about extreme life extension, open-ended youth, open-ended health? This has been a dream since before recorded history. I mean, I'm sure it has been. We don't have any record of it, obviously. But it goes back at least 6,000 years. People have always been, been pursuing youth and the fountain of youth. Uh, people have been plagued by by old age and the, 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 all the, all the, all the uh, crappy squares that go with it. And this uh, has always been a dream. It's been a fantasy. People have searched for it, but with no real scientific basis. Finally, in 2009, we have a scientific roadmap. And the question now becomes, well, how long will they take to get this thing done? And I've assembled you in this room to tell you that it's not they anymore. They are us, because the science is already laid out. We know what we need to accomplish. It's up to us. It's up to business people. It's up to movers and shakers, at least you. It's up to people that have a business sense, marketing sense, public relations sense, the ability to go out and market this whole prospect to the public to make them aware that extreme life extension is finally possible, not just in their dreams, but in their life, in your life, but only if we do something about it. If we don't, it's just still a dream. The scientists language, uh, language oh, the, science, the science doesn't get developed until we raise enough money to get this off the ground funded and implemented. Now, we're looking at, um, we're looking at the um, science, and when people talk about extreme life extension, they, uh, when we're talking about actual age reversal, this seems to be a very revolutionary concept. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not revolutionary at all. This is a natural progression of medical science. This is the direction it's going in. It's evolutionary, not revolutionary. What may seem revolutionary is the speed at which we're going to be attaining this. And we're here to accelerate it because if we don't, many of us are going to die unnecessarily. Many of the people we love are going to die unnecessarily. And when we do, we're going to be saving hundreds of thousands or millions of lives at a minimum. Our plan is to have this done by 2029. That's demonstrate the ability to reverse aging in a human being, in an older human being. That's our plan. Are we going to reach it by 2029? My opinion is absolutely, with a lot of hard work, little bit of luck, and a lot of perseverance and dedication. What if it takes 2039 or 2049? I, I really, nobody here really knows. And what is age reversal? I say demonstrate the capability. But however long it takes, 
is it's, it's just another example another, it, it, of, uh, as to how important it is for you to take care of yourselves in the meantime. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to do that because the time you can add to your life with what we know today could open the window of opportunity for you to be able to take care of tomorrow's miraculous medical technologies that are being developed. The question is, and this is actually finally a choice, no longer a hypothetical question. Will you be part of the last generation to suffer, decline, and die from aging? Or will you be part of the first generation to enjoy open-ended health and youth and vitality and everything else that goes along with it? It's a choice. And a lot of what we decide here and come up with today in, the, in our brainstorm session to follow is going to determine how many people make the boat and how many people miss the boat.